This is Buffoon, and you're listening to the sound of my voice. Okay, a new war drops in just a few days, kiddos. My understanding is the quest itself can take around four hours to finish, and during at least some of that time, you're going to be locked into the loadout you chose. So I've given it some thought, and here's what I'm planning to bring. Obviously, Octavia. I have 12 Octavias, but for this I'm going to bring my OG original. And on the Mandicord, my all-time favorite. It's Hadaway, what is love? Well, kind of. Anyway, this is my standard try-hard build. Two Umbral mods, lots of duration, lots of range, and some strength. It's honestly hard to build Octavia wrong. For a primary, I'm bringing Tenora Prime. It felt on brand. Got a nice crit ribbon for it. I wanted a different element, so I'm going with cryo rounds. And for enemies that doesn't work so great on, 100 munitions. It takes sentience down okay. But the alt fire is something I almost never use. And one of my new favorite secondaries, the Tenet Psychron. This is all about status, and you don't have to worry about running out of ammo. I like using this to viral proc a whole room, and then clean up with melee. Speaking of which, this might be my heaviest hitting Zaw. It's a heavy attack crit build. Guaranteed red crits on a heavy attack, on top of some serious base damage. I like to use it in combo with the Psychron. <laughs> Holy shit, was that 500k on a Symbolist? That'll do. And if I absolutely need something that goes boom, there's always Exodia Contagion. Moving on, Xenoric. Or Xenoric? Whatever. That's my focus goal, big surprise. Maxed out except for a few that I don't need that cost extra energy. I doubt Parazon mods are gonna matter, but as long as I'm showing everything, these are the three I like. For Companion, I don't think there's any choice here. For a brand new quest, you bring Helios and you scan everything. A basic utility and survivability build. My current favorite Sentinel weapon is the Hellstrom. Your companion isn't going to be killing anything at any serious level, so instead of damage, I focus on status and fire rate. It's there to run interference. Okay, time for the vehicle section. We know there's Railjack on this quest, so I'm bringing Amisha. Pretty standard build. Oh, kinetic diversion. I forgot all about that. Neat. So, Amisha is made for Railjack. Start with Vengeful Rush. Let them shoot you to fill up on energy. Then Watchful Swarm. Now you're invincible for a couple dozen hits. And finally, turn on Warding Grace to slow them down for easy pickings. It requires some time and energy management, but as an Octavia man, that's my bread and butter. For an arc gun, I'm bringing the good old Imperator Vandal. Oh, whoops. Guess I haven't touched this build in a while. This thing can fire for days. I hate waiting for the reload on arc guns. There hasn't been a new arc melee in years, so Centaur is still the best. Pretty standard build with as much crit as you're gonna get. And extend so it locks on from further away. It works, I guess. For heavy weapon, I'm a Grattler guy. Got a nice crit ribbon. I mean, come on. How satisfying is this? The answer is a lot. For a Necromech, I gotta give it to the Void Rig. The ability to rain just stupid amounts of damage from a distance is too good. So we got some survival, some powers, and some quality of life stuff. I'm using Grattler again on the Necromech with a slightly different build. More fire rate, since ammo isn't a problem in a Necromech. This somehow makes the Grattler even more satisfying. And for the Exalted Gun, just damage and fire rate. The numbers on this thing are so big you can't go wrong. We know there's going to be some operator stuff, so let's put some thought into the amp. I guess this would be a 747. Flamora is my favorite prism. It just melts things up close. And I'm bringing the FOD for backup. The Ropa Lolist fight taught me that you don't want to be without a long range amp. 
plus, it's pretty funny to watch FOD work its way through a group. It doesn't do so bad on sentience either. Also hilarious. And of course, the Certus Brace for more crit. For the Amp Arcane, I've got Virtuous Strike. It's just generally good on the Clamora. And my standard Operator Arcanes, Magus Lockdown and Magus Elevate. It's just nice having crowd control and healing whenever you want. Well, that's it, right? Wrong. What do you have on your Railjack? I'm pretty sure even a brand new baby Railjack is gonna be fine, but I might as well go over it while we're all here. On my Plexus, defense, speed, hurt stuff, some quality of life. Oh, I should probably put Sentient Scalpel on there. I like Shatter Burst and Void Hole. Shatter Burst can take out the Riff Raff and the weak points on cruise ships. And Void Hole is just the best. This is awesome, and you're not going to convince me to use anything else while this exists. Uh, and I guess the only one of these I use regularly is Void Cloak. <laughs> the name tag doesn't cloak. Has that always been the case? So for intrinsics, I have them all maxed out, but if you have to pick and choose, get one in piloting so you can use boost, and get five in tactical. Recall the warp is absolutely essential. Instantly going back to the ship is worth going for right away. And if you can't deploy a necromecha mission, then you're really missing out. So a Necromech was required for the new more quest, but we've been told there's no intrinsic requirements. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I guess we'll find out. So what's on my actual Railjack? Zekti shields, because I like getting shields back up fast. Vidar engines, because I want to go faster while shooting. Levon plating for straight up health. And a Vidar reactor, basically just to make Void Hole more awesome. Vidar Carcinox on the pilot gun. Still my favorite. Feels good to use and it kills things quick. Zekti Talons on the side guns. The shots from these don't have travel time, so my AI crew will absolutely delete everything in view with these. And your basic Tycho Seeker. I use this for one thing, and that's blasting everything in the middle of a void hole. That's why I get up in the morning. Speaking of crew, mine is two gunners and an engineer. Pilots are still pretty useless, and you don't need a dedicated defender. The engineers got my back, and the gunners, well, just watch this. I'm not going to fire a shot. I don't know what I'm paying those guys, but it's worth it. So am I over-preparing? Absolutely. You can get all the way through the New War prequels at Mastery Rank 5. And as far as I know, there's no extra requirements for the new war itself. So it's not like it's going to be Steel Path or anything. Still, it's been pretty fun to go through my whole loadout and prepare to blow this quest to smithereens. I'll see everyone on the other side. Thanks for watching. So is there like a treaty? You're not supposed to attack mysterious floating words in space? Words are neutral? Do only we see the words? I have so many questions.